So if you've been on a sales call over the last couple of days or weeks or months, and I'm sure you have, inevitably, one of your managers probably came up to you and asked, what's the pain? What's the pain? What's the need? But one of the things I like to talk about is the motivations on why people buy, and it's not completely limited just to pain. Uh, there are other reasons why customers buy, and, and I think we need to pay attention to those as well. Ultimately, when people make decisions, including buying, it's generally motivated by some kind of urgency. And it could be pain, but it could be something else, and it could be pleasure. When I say pleasure, there might be a variety of reasons a customer might buy that have nothing to do with fixing a problem, but have a lot more to do with gaining desire or wanting something or getting a competitive edge or growing the company or hitting certain targets. If you understand as a salesperson which of those two things are happening, uh, it really can help you greatly in knowing how to manage that sales process. And one of the things we talk a lot about in my programs is how to uncover those things and how to discover is pain in the room, is pleasure in the room, are they both in the room? You see, the difference between pain and pleasure buyers is pretty remarkable. Well, for one thing, it's probably more of an emotional decision, which means that you're probably less price sensitive and more competitive proof. What does that mean? Well, you're probably not tethered into whether or not there's a discount attached or if you have to buy it um, um, for those reasons. You're probably gonna buy it because you want it and you might spend a little even more than you want it. And if there's a competitive product out there and you're a pleasure buyer, you're less likely to be, to be swayed by the competitor because you're so enamored with that specific product, not its application. Another thing that happens with pleasure buyers, it builds rapport with the salesperson. And think about it. You're really excited about that iPad. Well, probably you're going to spend, I don't know, half an hour in the, in the, in the Apple store. You're going to talk to the, to the sales assistant. You're going to ask them a bunch of questions. They're going to ask you how you'll use it. And they'll show you all the features and benefits. You're very likely you're going to build some rapport with that, 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 that rep. You might even exchange business cards. That's very classic with a pleasure buyer. We'll, we'll talk about how it's different with the pain buyers. And ultimately, you can really get a champion out of that buyer. The, you know, no, no one builds champions better than companies like Apple. And, and clearly, when you're uh, motivated by pleasure, you're more likely to evangelize your own purchase. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your coworkers, look at this great thing that I bought. And finally, a, a wonderful thing about pleasure buy buyers is that they are perfect for upselling, cross-selling, and selling other products and getting the uh, account a little bit larger. These are all classic things that pleasure buyers do. So, sounds good. Sounds like we want a bunch of pleasure buyers. Well, I was a pain buyer in that other story. Does that make me worse? I don't think so, it just makes me different. First of all, more rational, which means it's gonna be a quicker sale, which was very much true. I knew what I wanted. I knew the iPad model I wanted, and I knew it was for my kids, so I knew exactly which model to, to, to choose at. Also with pain, you can get collective agreement among multiple buyers. I'm in the store with my wife for that pain purchase, and we both are in agreement that we need this other iPad. It's very easy. But if it's a pleasure buyer, there might be dissent between myself and my wife on what to buy and vice versa, because it's very hard sometimes for multiple buyers on the same side to agree on pleasure. So that makes something pretty cool and quick about pain buyers. One of the big motivators for a pain buyer is speed. They want to make that purchase happen and they want to happen quickly. When I went into that Apple store, I went into a mall, I double parked, I ran in, I wanted to buy the, the product and I wanted to leave. I was highly motivated to get this wrapped up, which if you are a salesperson and you recognize a pain buyer, that's awesome because you can close faster as you should. And finally, inbound leads that we always love as warm inbound opportunities, very often those are pain motivated as opposed to pleasure. So there's, a, there's quite a bit of difference, I would argue, between a pet plane and a pleasure buyer. And it's incumbent upon us as salespeople to identify it. And we can do it through the way that we do questions, so we can do it through the way we, we use our wording and use vocabulary. You know, one of our, our great programs we call The Perfect Meeting is this great opportunity to learn a new way to structure a meeting where you can absolutely uncover if they're pain or pleasure. But ultimately, once you've uncovered if it's a pain buyer or a pleasure buyer, understand the differences between the behavior and how they're gonna act in that sales process, you can have tremendous success. Ignore it, and you're kind of pursuing things at your own peril. So think about what motivates people. It's not always limited to pain. It can also include pleasure and make that part of your daily kind of routine when you're going through that checklist and preparing for your meeting and making sure that it ends at a close.